this presentation we're going to talk about intro to web 2o technologies what is it look at a uh, web 2o applications out there on the internet I'm sure you've seen a lot of these maybe even use a bunch of these um, but uh, we're going to look at in this course and in some of your projects that you're going to do um, integrating some of these as part of the assignments and the usefulness of these for especially in the area of digital and in online teaching and electronic um, media and things like that that we can use to better convey our um, content to our audience whether they're students or people that we're training as adults or in companies um, that sort of thing so um, we'll look at some examples as well but these are just a few a few there's uh, tons more out there and new things come out every day um, on the internet, uh, obviously with uh, Google Hangouts, we'll look at that, and um, Google Plus, um, Evernote's another one that's really good that's not on the list, um, but you probably can think of several that are not on this list as well, but um, we'll look at some of these. What does it cost to use Web 2.0 point technologies? Well, many of them have a, an introductory kind of a freebie teaser, you know, give you a certain amount of uh, data storage <clears throat> for, uh, for free. If you're a, in, in education, a lot of times you can get a basic account um, or a, a bit of a, a higher uh, uh, pro account or something like that for a reduced uh, rate. And um, so make sure you check into that as well um, for those opportunities. But some, some of them you actually can you know, be able to use um, quite efficiently even just with the, the uh, free uh, versions. Let's look at a few examples. Um, first is the Prezi. Uh, you all will be making a Prezi presentation in this course and um, go to their website. They've got a great um, set of tutorials and things like that that you can use that are, are quite helpful and will um, provide a lot of good examples on how to set one up. And so this one here I created um, as we did an assessment of our program and um, look at different areas and it's really great for doing, um, like I said, presentations in a, in a unique way, in a real creative way. I think you'll enjoy this pro project. All right, well, here's a couple examples of some websites that I have. Um, this one here on the left is for my um, university web page. And the other one is one that I created over here on the right is a Google site that you'll be doing um, that I created uh, several years back and haven't really updated it just because I've been using this other one over here on the left um, since it's tied into the university and things like that so need to do a little bit of updating on this one as well um, but you see I can have my Vita on here uh, I link to that um, and then YouTube page and some other links and then a video embedded there and some other neat things but you can do that as well on the Google site. So um, for those of you that are going to be doing a Google site um, for your project on the, um, the first project, um, go ahead and, you know, play with that. There's a lot of neat things in there. Now we can embed, you can put hyperlinks, um, use that. Think of that more as a uh, electronic uh, resume, really, and um, be able to showcase some of the things that you've, you've done and, and, and have done in the past and, and are doing as a part of your program. So I think um, this exercise will be really good for you, so um, be enjoy that. Okay, we're going to just talk a little bit about Google Plus, how we're going to use it this semester in the three courses. This obviously is a 655 higher ed, but it'll apply to the other two courses I'm teaching on the uh, Master of Science in Global E-Learning, so you'll see that as we go through. But um, if you don't have a Google Plus account yet, uh, go ahead and create one um, and then send me your Gmail address. And so just go ahead and click this image right here about Google Plus. Um, if you don't have an account, you go ahead and create one. It's free. Um, this is my Google Plus page and all of my different um, circles that I have. Talk a little bit about circles. I made uh, three of them here, as you see. Um, higher Ed 655 for the spring, EDUC 510, and then EDUC 516 for the two master's courses in global e-learning. And um, go over here to the circles page, um, uh, just up above here, after you created your profile and name and everything, 
And um, what I'm going to do once I get your uh, Gmail account is I'll go ahead and add you to my circles here. All right. So for example, I've got um, um, EDUC 516 here, and I can go ahead and share this out. So I could go ahead and, for example, add more people. Um, once we have our whole group in here, I can send out like a share about a comment or something to everybody. And that way you guys can see that. I can go in here and click uh, View Shared Circle and see you there. Uh, I can add, include myself in this as I add this and send this out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click the 516 group. Okay, and go ahead and close that, and I'll just add, for example, um, I'll just do my Rick underscore Lemadu at the um, Tamu C address, and I will use your Gmail account to do this, but um, just for demonstration purposes. So here I've done that, and I can go ahead and share, and so then what will happen is in your stream, you'll get this, it'll show up like this, that um, you've been added to a circle. And what you'll need to do in on your circles is just go ahead and click the Add Circle. Okay, so you just double, you just click this. And what you'll want to do is basically just replicate the circle. So if you're in EDUC 510, just type it EDUC 510, just like I have it in mine. Okay, you see that? Um, if you're in EDUC 516, just do it at the EDUC 516. If you're in the higher ed 655, you will go ahead and just type that out and then just add that, okay? And then what we can do is get um, all the folks in our course um, that, that are part of this circle, that are in this class, to um, be in this circle so we all see the same thing and questions and, and all that that are posted by, um, by each other. Okay, so I we can actually share uh, video links here. Um, we can sort this out, like I said, by this the the circle that you're in. If you want to leave it up for everybody, this is like the kind of like the stream where everybody's in there and includes all these circles that I have. Um, if I just want to go by you know one of my courses or see my colleagues here and see all their posts, it comes up like that. Um, but there again, I'll I'll stay probably with these. Um, you know circles like you'd want to do and you can come in here and just you know post a question to me um, you can um, you know answer a question if you see there's another student that you could reply to um, if there's links in there that you want to show uh, video um, maybe a YouTube or something like that it's real easy to do like a YouTube or if you wanted to share something from your phone a question or something interesting interesting you saw on the internet that pertains to uh, the subject matter that we're talking about. Another great thing is we can um, do Google Hangouts and they're like video conferencing, sort of like a Skype, but it was it, we can do it within the circle. So what's great is we could go ahead and just start a Hangout and I just click that down there, just that icon, and it starts up just right here. Just click that little icon down there on the right and it just takes a second or so to upload, you know, to get loaded. And um, what I'm going to do is hit this Hangouts with Extras here, okay, underneath there, and I'll try Hangouts with Extras. And another thing I encourage you to do is to um, do this with Google Chrome. Um, just seems to work a little bit better. And so I can name this, you know, I can call this like, you know, Module 1 Hangout or whatever. Um, I can add, you know, circles or people to share this with. So if I just wanted to share this with the, the, the 655 group, I could do that, or the 516, I'll just click them. And then I can go ahead and click uh, Start the Hangout. And this is really neat in here. Um, much like Class Live, for those of you that have had that, except we don't have to go through as many clicks and uh, you know sign-ins and all that kind of thing. The one th drawback is we do not get the um, uh, record feature on this, unless we did like a screen recording or something. Um, but what's really nice about this is you can share your video camera. I can mute that if I want. I can turn it back on. Same with the microphone. I can turn that on or off. Now you can just play with this a little bit. We'll just do that, you know, the first couple weeks as we get used to everything. Um, over here on the left side, you see um, Hangouts with Extras. Um, I have, like, notes here. If we could open up a notes and we could, you know, work on something together and edit it. 
Um, and I can just type in some, you know, hi everyone, you know. And what's great about this is that when we're all done, instead of sending an email back and forth with an attachment, this would actually sync up with everybody that's in the uh, Hangout at the same time. It'll, it'll sync up in your Google Docs which is really cool. Another thing we can do is add a document. So any of the documents that you have or I have in my Google um, Google Docs, we can work on that. Like um, if we needed to work on a, um, a degree plan like Dustin's or like Laura Boo, we worked on hers a couple weeks ago before the break and we were in the Google Hangout and, and edited her um, uh, degree plan. We wanted to work on a document so we just sort this through the documents or or a presentation um, like a PDF or something or a PowerPoint we can edit that um, there's the spreadsheets for the um, degree plans and, uh, and then here documents if we want to collaborate on a on a particular manuscript or an article or something like that we could do that these are some of the notes that are left over that have synced up from other hangouts that I've had um, but we'll, we'll play around with this quite a bit this semester I think you'll really find this kind of fun and really um, uh, just a, a, just kind of neat in the sense that um, it's kind of out there in you know web 2.0 and once you're you're signed in to your Gmail account and you just you just basically one one login area where you can go back and forth between your documents come into here you don't have to do a bunch of you know going through all the steps of getting into the e-college system to do some of the um, administrative things that we like to do uh, with just asking questions or do some of the video conferencing um, as well as collaborating with your classmates that you're probably already going to do in Google Documents anyways if you're working on projects and working in groups. So I'm going to close this uh, Hangout for now and so you see now we're back here and this is where we can you know add you know post comments in here or questions or whatever and that will show up just to the group that you're a part of here in EDUC 516 same thing here in 510 we can do chats over here if we want um, so I think you'll find this pretty exciting and kinda neat to work with the great thing about this too is it's on um, all the mobile devices so if you have an Android phone or an iPhone OS it works on that same with the iPads and uh, of course cross platforms on the other um, operating systems Mac and PC so I uh, look forward to uh, learning uh, with you guys and using this this semester I think it should be uh, a really good time. So um, more to come. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay, I just want to take a couple minutes here and show you guys how to access the uh, database uh, from the library for journal articles uh, that you can use for your uh, papers, your research papers, as well as abstracts and other assignments that you'll have uh, here in the uh, master's and doctoral program. So. We'll go ahead and uh, turn off the webcam and we'll go into the eCollege uh, course website uh, from your online course. Uh, looks like this. And you see the library um, under course home, syllabus, um, all those are there. And so just click the library. Just double click that. And then it comes up here and find an article, finding information, services, collections, all that. I think the best thing to do is just go ahead here and click find an article. And so once you click find an article, uh, best to click on education and then uh, click that, uh, the word education, it's a hyperlink there. And um, you've got these different uh, databases here, five of them that come up. So um, probably best to, I'll just go ahead and click on ProQuest. So you can click ProQuest and then it'll connect to the uh, ProQuest database. And so you can type in something like uh, training, training and development okay and then another uh, search phrase maybe um, uh, diversity or technology so I'll type in technology and um, best here on the date range you see you've got some different uh, limiters here so if you can do within the last uh, five years so let's click after this date and then just type in uh, 2004 and that'll go automatically to January um, and then click on uh, you can click full text documents only online or scholarly and scholarly journals so let's go with the peer-reviewed because we want you to use peer-reviewed journals um, we'll leave the full text documents only um, blank for now um, and then uh, we'll just go ahead and hit search 
and uh, see what we get as a result here. And so you see we get 453 documents or articles that are out there um, in um, in this uh, library database and so you've got uh, lots of different choices to go through here that's just with words like technology you can use diversity any other issues that we've talked about in um, higher education and uh, training and development uh, courses like cross-cultural issues presentation uh, management development um, human resource management and training and development uh, just a lot of different uh, things that you can um, use to maybe narrow your search but uh, you'll obviously cast a wider bigger net with uh, you know the less phrases you use or uh, search phrases or words so um, I just wanted to make you guys all aware of that now you'll see here um, this one here has me measuring leadership and self-management teams using the competitive values framework you see here it's got all the information um, it's 10 pages long some of these are only like a page I'd rather you go like at least minimum of eight to ten pages or you know at least eight pages you can go more than that um, but I don't want like four to five or six page now you see this one here says full text PDF so if you click that that'll actually open up as a PDF and you can download that to your computer um, using uh, Safari software um, the uh, Safari um, web browser has a um, up and uh, here on this site if you click save as PDF it'll actually save it on your hard drive okay on your desktop you put it there uh, Firefox has an add-on that you can get uh, save as PDF add-on and you can do the same thing with that so you can save it and download it okay so that's how you do that um, if you're done with that you can go back uh, say there's not a um, an online version that you uh, so here you would click check for full text and then this here would uh, search uh, across the databases and so you would click over here uh, after reading the abstract if it's something you continue you know think that's something you're interested in click here to check uh, for availability so you click that and then it'll tell you over here um, if we have it in full text there at EBSCO some of the other search databases okay so I hope that helps you good luck Poll Everywhere grabs your audience by letting them participate in your presentation using their mobile phones. Through a simple text message, your audience can vote or send in their questions and comments to the presenter. It's the first do-it-yourself tool for collecting feedback using the device your audience already owns, their mobile phones. It's perfect for any size presentation or for adding an interactive element to TV, radio, and print campaigns. Sign up for a free account and in less than a minute you'll have made a text message poll that updates in real time. How cool is that? Let's try it out. Let's say you have about a thousand people attending a presentation and you want to do some audience choice voting like on American Idol. We'll type a question and a few possible answers and we're going to let everyone vote once. We'll reply to their votes with a simple thanks and a link to a website. You can customize the way the poll looks and download a special PowerPoint slide containing a graph that changes as people vote. The audience participates by either sending a short text message or by going to poll4.com on their phone's web browser. As soon as they press send, the chart updates. Poll Everywhere is powerful enough for Fortune 500 customers with features like one-click slide downloads, downloadable results, embeddable voting widgets, and multi-poll analytics. So sign up for a free account and see for yourself. And this brings us to the end of the first lecture here, Intro to Web 2.0 Technologies, What Is It? And the next lecture we'll be looking at um, why Web 2.0 Technologies and um, the reasons behind that in engaging today's students, the 21st century learner. So look forward to seeing the next uh, module.